the Kind of About Music podcast. Albert, thank you for agreeing to come to the podcast today. Well, for doing the podcast today, this is Kind of About Music podcast. Okay. First thing to ask is probably uh, how you got started in guitar and what your uh, why country music as well, because that's not something that um, everybody would have necessarily gone into at that time. Well, yeah, I get, I get asked that occasionally, you know, but to me it doesn't seem any more uh, unnatural than, you know, why do young white guys here yeah. want to play the blues, you know? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. You know, it's all the same thing, really. Uh, but no, I, the first time I heard it, I loved it. Yeah. But, I, you know, I was listening to everything. I listened to rock and roll. And, of course, yeah. You know, quite varied interests, really, and I've always loved classical music, you know, but I loved country, and I started buying records in the 60s and and then eventually even though I was playing R&B with Chris Farlow in the 60s I I, uh, I thought hey, it wouldn't be nice to just try it playing in a country band just see what it sounded like you know felt or felt like and I did that for about 18 months and I soon realized that I wasn't Is that hands and feet is that Oh no, it's no. Pre- it was bo- before that it was okay. uh, uh, we were called Country Fever Right, okay. Yeah, so that was we, your first taste of country music? Yeah, we were playing for, country for music playing it. And, we, and we, know, we played around London and, mm. and various, okay, occasionally play US bases. But, yeah. um, but I soon realised that uh, the country clubs here in, in England, uh, they, all they wanted was Jim Reeves and Johnny Cash. Right, okay. So, uh, and we were into the Burrito Brothers, you know. Right, and, so uh, Graham Parsons and... Yeah, and, and you, you know, it was, it was country, uh, the beginnings of country rock. Yeah, really. Yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, it was natural for me because I was already an old kind of old, old rock and roll player, yeah, so sure. I was into that. And, you know, a lot of that old rock and roll, like the Everly Brothers and Buddy Holly, so all closely related to country music, you know, yeah, so it was an easy step for me, you know. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I remember I've sort of seen you on, in guitar magazines and on videos and my, da- I, my dad, who I, I, who I introduced to you when you played in Stockport, he, uh, he grew up in similar thing to what you did, mm. rock and roll and uh, R&B bands and stuff like that. And a yeah. big influence from him was like Chuck Berry and all that sort of stuff. Of course, that yeah. Originally you couldn't get across here at that time as well. And, listening to records that were imported and things like that. Of course, oh, yeah, no, a lot of people did that, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. You, you ended up, uh, am I right in saying that you ended up going to Hamburg like the Beatles at some point? Too? Yeah, I was, you know, a lot of bands were in uh, in Germany in the early 60s and throughout the 60s, you know. What but, was the cause of that? Why, why was this Why was such a scene for British bands in Hamburg? Well, it was work. They, right, you know, okay. they'd, they'd, uh, there were lots of bands around London here and guys would come over they hear bands that they liked and they say, hey, you want to come to Hamburg for a week or two weeks or right. whatever? Yeah, and of course you would jump at the chance of somewhere. Are you originally a London lad yourself then? You originally well, from? I grew up in London. I was yeah. born on the Welsh borders. Oh, right, right? okay. Shropshire. You right, know? okay, excellent. But uh, that's where my mother was from. But, you know, yeah. after the war, once the, the doodlebugs stopped flying over, <laughs> uh, she brought me back to London, you know. Yeah. And, okay. uh, so I grew up in South East London. So other guitar players of that kind of who, who would have started at that sort of thing you think about like Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck and you've played with a lot well, of Well we all listen to the same records really Yeah the fir- I mean my first album was The Chirping Crickets Right okay Buddy Holly and yeah. that was Eric's first yeah. album too Yeah of course You know so we we all listen to the same kind of stuff and I was a huge fan of uh, Cliff Gallup with Jim Vincent Right and uh, as was Jeff Beck mm. you know we we both learned all the solos off of the right okay. uh, of each song on, yeah, yeah. on the first two albums. And you do have the records because again, I, I uh, remember stuff that my dad told me about this about the idea of songs only coming on the radio once every so often. That's so you'd right. have to really remember it when you first. That's heard. right. Yeah. yeah. You, and you that's why you went searching for it. And yeah. You couldn't wait for it to be back on again. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you, you're listening to family favourites on the BBC, yeah. and all of a sudden Peggy Sue comes on or Little Richards. Yeah. Wow, great. What's this? Yeah, yeah, And then exactly. it'd, go, it'd go back to Petula Clark, and, <laughs> you know. And, but yeah, we we were we weren't served very well in the early days. But you know, yeah. You know, it, but it must have given you that kind of extra <clears throat> hunger for it, sort of thing. You know, of like course, you, yeah. Not um, like there's a you can, music so easy to come by, and it's in a sense kind of cheapened in a sense there by streaming and things like that. Whereas back in the day, I imagine you would have been 
kind of desperate to hear this track oh, absolutely, the previous yeah. week and it would have yeah. been a much different thing for kind of you yeah and up. going out and buying buying an album it was a a, a big outlay yeah you know uh, like 35 shillings or something yeah. like a a pound or what, what is that as as uh, you know about two pounds or one, one pound 75 or something right how's that yeah. equate to kind of a, a day's work well, uh, uh, when I was buying, when I bought my first crickets album, I was getting three pounds a week. Right. Okay. So I, you know, I'd, that was a big outlay. Yeah. I'd, I'd give my mum a pound, yeah. and I'd go and buy a record or two. You yeah, know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And now every people don't want <laughs> and to. And then I had to borrow pounds. all the money back from my mum so I could eat <laughs> when I went to work. <laughs> What was your so a, a guitar then must have been an even even more of a kind of of a huge thing. What was your first guitar and how did you get? Well, you know, we just we couldn't get American guitars until yeah. 1960, mid yeah. 60s, mid mid, mid 1960. So a lot of us were playing Hofners and yeah. German guitars and yeah. which are actually nowadays are kind of collectors' items almost now. Yeah, people. you don't <laughs> see them, do you? Yeah, no. You know. So, uh, and you want. Talking about the actual guitar itself, then you're, you've got a very iconic guitar, which is a Music Man, which I yeah. think I've heard you talk about where you designed that with... Um, well, I, d I didn't design it, but it, okay. I kind of uh, adopted it. it yes, yeah, sorry, that it was, was it. it. was like the second guitar that Ernie Ball Music Man yeah. designed. Yeah. And uh, when I, I saw them at the trade show, I thought, wow, I kind of like those. They're a bit wacky it's unique. looking and yeah. unique looking. You know, I mean, guitars now are outrageous, you know. Yeah, but, of course. Yeah. But I still think it, it, it's wacky looking, but it, it's still classy as well, you know. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I was watching, uh, we were just brushing up this morning, me and Tim, uh, just before we came here. Because um, you, you played for the Everly Brothers at, uh, for a Well, a I first time. met them in the early 60s. Yeah. And worked with Don when they weren't speaking to each other in the... Yeah. In the 70s and early 80s so you know i, I worked with don yeah a bit, of course and know. they were kind of like country music the beatles of country music almost at the time yeah, yeah. and and but what i was going to say is uh, you played the reunion show at the royal albert hall which must have been amazing yeah. and you had a telecaster in that one was that particular i like, did yeah the style of it or uh well i didn't have my music man or oh, was that before yeah. the music man yeah right. it was before okay. the music man yeah because the, yeah. the telecaster is like the iconic country yeah. kind of stalwart of country guitar sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, no, um, I, I you know, I still love the telly, but yeah. I'd, I've gotten so used to my guitar now. I've been playing a guitar like that, oh, I don't know, since uh, mid 80s. Yeah. Mid 80s. You used it, I, I was, the other thing that I saw is that you used it on stage with Spinal Tap. You played with Spinal Tap at the Royal Albert Hall. I did, yeah. yeah. That well, was that, that was through Ernie Ball because, really? uh, yeah. Well, that you, did you see the guitar that Nigel Tufnell played with the with all the pickups, all the pickups yeah, on yeah. it? Well, that that is my guitar. Oh you, wow! That, that's the, my, the body of my guitar, but yeah. they, they stuck all that stuff on it. So I'm quite <laughs> proud of that. Did he have a little knob that went up to <clears> eleven <throat> as well? I'm sure he was. If you're oh yeah, in class oh yeah, they, they were weird stuff on it. Yeah, it was yeah. great. That, that was in, I was I was watching that actually. You can find that on YouTube if you if you look if you look hard enough. Um, it's the interesting thing was hey, you're playing. Um, kind of of 80s power rock sort of thing but you've got this you've still got the clean tone and it totally works it's, it's a great sound what's have you, have you ever been a user of kind of pedals or distortion in any way have you ever been tempted uh, no, I don't, by that I don't like distortion too yeah. much you know I like a clean sound with a compression yeah. reverb little yeah. a little uh, uh, phasing or, or a chorus on it you yeah, know, and sure. maybe a, a little delay you know yeah. but subtlety really yeah. all round i don't like it yeah well when the guys just you know they're so proud of their guitar that's worth like ten thousand dollars yeah and they totally disguise the sound yeah, of, it. of course yeah you yeah. know they could be playing anything that's right i think um i think i've seen you on a, on a few things for music man where you're doing uh well you're taking a solo and then another guitar player would take a solo and, and it's it's a country song and then there's this amazing clean sound and this kind of I always think of it like playing like a Wolverine almost, like with all the finger, uh, finger picking and hybrid picking. It's just, mm. uh, it's, it's uh, so technical and, and so full. And then mm. it will go to maybe a metal guy or a rock guy kind of coming in mm. with a wailing pentatonic and it, it, doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to work as much. What was it that inspired your kind of 
idea of that kind of... Uh, you mean the kind of bl um, finger-style bluegrass style? For sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it, um, you know, obviously I listened to a little bit of Chad Atkins and Jerry Reed, yeah. and I, I couldn't really play what they were playing because they were using a thumb pick. And, yeah. But I, I, I liked, I liked uh, the old Scruggs, I liked the banjo rolls, you know, and I kind of figured out a way of doing that on the guitar. And uh, there was a great banjo player, he's still around, ca uh, called Buck Trent. Right, okay. And he had an electric banjo. Right. With, uh, with uh, those Scruggs pe pegs, you know, that, so he could do like string bending with the pegs. Really? And a lever on it too, so he could drop the... It's so like a the, kind of a whammy bar almost. Yeah, yeah. So he could drop the, the D down to C. And uh, so uh, he was a big influence, but... Um, uh, I don't know if he plays his electric banjo anymore. Mm. He, he was, you know, he played acoustic banjo too. You know, but yeah. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. It sounds like a, sounds like a guitar, but it sounds like a steel guitar. And, and then, of course, I heard Clarence White with the Telecaster with the B bender. Right. Okay. And I couldn't wait to get one of those. Yeah. You know, so I've got a. Your guitar doesn't have a B bender in it at the moment, does it? Uh, I've got, I've got about three or four of them. Yeah. In the states with B benders in. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, that that model. They yeah. made a, I made a couple of uh, of prototypes for me to try, but they 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 wouldn't. They said no, we're not going to put it on the market. You know, right? Uh, okay. There'd be a limited yeah uh, a privileged privilege privilege position it. to have the prototypes. Then, what? Yeah. Well, I, I can't. I've never actually tried to be bender myself, but I, I'd imagine it'd take a little bit of getting your head around because it's yeah. it's this slightly unnatural action. I would imagine. Well, but, it is. Yeah. Well, you adjust it so that it's easy to pull on, pull on the strap, mm. but it can't be too easy. Otherwise, you the guitar will be going all out of tune while yeah. you're playing it. Of you course, know? and you get that with a floating trem as well sometimes when you bend in strings yeah. as well, yeah. And you said like to allow you with the, with the kind of open chord sort of thing to, to keep the B string to be able to get that kind yeah, of pedal you get, steel. Yeah, you get these nice, you know, even bends, you know, yeah. that sound like, how does, he, how does he get it to sound so clean, you know? Yeah, he's it, well I'm it's doing it with <laughs> mechanically, you know? Excellent. So what's, uh, so you're in the UK at the moment, you live in the States most of the time. Yeah. Uh, what's coming up for you in the near future? Have you got any more UK dates? Uh, uh, well, anything? we're doing this for a month. Yeah. Uh, then I go back to the States. I've got some gigs on the East Coast with my American band. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, well, I'm just trying to think where I go first, but I'm going to go to Australia. I'm going to Japan first, actually. Oh, fantastic. I've got a, a, I'm flying all the way there for three days. Right, okay. Going to Japan. Yeah. That's with Peter Asher. I've been working with him right. just as a duo, you know, two oh, acoustic fantastic. guitars. And then I go to Australia. Yeah. With uh, with my US, US band, yeah. Well, I don't Hopefully know. There's I more than three dates there because that's a bit of a. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, it, it it was for two gigs at one time, you know, right. a couple of festivals. And we thought, well, it's we can't go there for two festivals and have like a week off in between or whatever. And now it's it's uh, become three weeks. Yeah. And uh, you know, I hope it's going to be worthwhile. For sure, I'm, I'm sure know. it will be to the fans for sure. What's, yeah. what's, what, what is it that actually, just before we wrap up, what is it that, what keeps you kind of going? You've had an amazing career. People use the word legend and stuff when they talk about you. And I yeah. know that I've seen you, as I say, in guitar magazines, on videos and stuff throughout yeah. time. What's the thing that keeps you kind of coming back to the stage? Because, like, I can't even imagine that having what the next 10 years will be sort of thing. But you've kind of kept going throughout all this time. And well, um, you know, you build up, you build up a, a following on these tours yeah. and uh, m you know usually they want you back yeah of course, they say yeah. well can we get you back the same time next year <laughs> and uh, and that's how they come together you know we yeah. say well yeah we'll we'll block off that period and that period yeah and we'll do pretty much the same gigs as we did last year yeah so you know as long as I can keep standing I can I can always guarantee that I can do a lot of those gigs e each yeah. year you know excellent well it's, it's so great that you're still going and you're still we're still able to see you. I'm going to have a watch tonight at, uh, in Putney. It's the half moon, isn't it? So yeah. I don't want to take any more of your time, Al. No, but thank no. you so much for oh, you're, agreeing you're to this. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. The Kind of About Music podcast.